So this time round, I actually have another highly sought after mentor um, from Piranha Profits. So it's actually El Osun Chiu. So Elson himself is actually a former prop trader, a senior prop trader, in fact. And uh, he actually achieved the firm's top trader award for twice in a row, I believe. So maybe just to share with our audiences that isn't really familiar with you, Elson, uh, maybe just do a quick self-introduction and your experiences thus far in the markets. All right. Hi, everyone. Elson over here. So I'm very honored to be invited by Piana Profits to do this uh, interview. So I started off my first job when I graduated from the university is uh, to become a, a proprietary trader. In fact, I actually studied business IT, but I did not take up an IT-related job, but I dived straight into uh, trading when I got the opportunity. So I was there for five years uh, as a prop desk trader, and then in 2016, I actually came, on, came out to be an independent trader. right? And since 2016 until now, it has been about seven years. I also conduct the, the price action manipulation course in Prina Profits. So in total, I have about 12 years of uh, trading experience, right? And also uh, during my time in the prop desk, uh, I achieved my first part of goal, trading as a, a new trader and then transiting to a senior trader. That was when I made about $1.2 million in the desk, of which I take half. When I conduct the uh, price action division course, I also uh, trade actively my own portfolio, right? And since then make uh, a couple of million dollars in trading, whether Forex, Futures, uh, Crypto, right? I also invest on my own uh, property as well. Actually, that's fairly interesting, right? Because people would think that usually when you study a particular degree in university, that is your route, right? Those that study accountancy will go into accounting. So what was the trigger point, if you can still remember, on you wanted to be a prop trader? All right, so just like any university grad in the business school, right? Your 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 goal uh, in university, I think, uh, is as a business student, right, is to get to become an investment banker. You ask any student, investment banker, asset management, private equity, hedge fund, you name it, these are the glamour, right? I actually interned in uh, one of the top banks and subsequently I was uh able to get a full-time job offer. But uh that was also when I, I started to look still look around, see if what what kind of job opportunity can I still get. And I chanced upon this proprietary trading role, right? And during the time I was doing some retail trading on my own, like many Singaporeans, I opened like Poems account, started trading like all the Singapore related stock, first resources, Yang Zijiang, and Noble Group, but all lost money, la, right? You lose more than you make. And I was very intrigued by the idea of trading. I was reading a lot of books of, of trading. And even attended uh, one of uh, Adam's. Uh, uh, trading courses. When I chanced upon a proprietary trading role in the job, the school job portal, I decided to go for it. And I initially I didn't thought that I will get uh even invited for the interview. I sent my CV in and I was called for interview. And long story short, I was selected. And that's when I got a dilemma. I remember that day when I was called up after the interview in the evening, the senior trader told me that uh, you you are, you are selected and you need to give us an answer by tomorrow, 12 noon. And I was like, oh shit, I need to make a very serious decision suddenly. But I think there's one thing that really pushed me to trading overnight. Because huh? it's not just about the strategy, like what strategy bar pattern to buy and sell. That's how I jump into prop trading. Circling back to this idea of price action manipulation, right? So this is something very, very new. I think it's very interesting um, compared to many other people that are also offering similar services, right? Or even teaching uh, maybe technical charts and whatnot. So I just wanted to ask, actually, how did this idea of price action manipulation came about? What was the whole maybe genesis or the starting of this? And why should maybe existing investors or traders watching this video, they'll be thinking, oh, I'm really doing my value investing, my growth investing, my technical analysis. Why should I learn about PEM in this case? Initially, there's actually no, when I was trading, I didn't know it was called price action manipulation. Because what I was doing in the prop desk is, uh, we just know that it's something special. We didn't really think that it's, it's called price action manipulation. We just, when we trade, we always look out, we were taught to look out for uh, the big boys squeezing and faking out the the moves and all that, but there's no really specific theory called 
price action manipulation. And when you Google online and you, I can tell you there's very little information or they, there is information, but probably they just one paragraph. There is no like specific strategy or even when you read books, there's no book that tells you there's a book on price manipulation. All the while I've been, when I was in the prop desk and even when I trade myself, this is something that we look out for, but it was only when I, after I joined, uh, I was invited by Adam to conduct the price action manipulation course, suggested, why not we call it, you're talking about price action, right? You're talking about manipulation. So why not we call it price action manipulation? And during a time in the industry, it was a totally new concept, right? There isn't, uh, it's very different from uh, like what you said, the normal technical analysis understanding of the market. And when, in, when we're looking at price action, it's important to a new trader or even experienced trader to know this because it is real time. Unlike uh, momentum indicators, which uh, derive from price and time, so they lack in terms of uh, analysis, right? Because you only know the MACD or RSI cross after the price move or the MA slope after the price move. They are derived from price and time. And so I think it will help a lot of traders is that you will be able to time your entry more effectively exit more effectively as well. You don't have to wait for a breakout to come or moving average to cross. And this will drastically improve your win rate and also your risk reward when you take on the trade. So I think zooming specifically into PAM itself, right? Like the cost outline. So I do know that right now there is probably a cap PAM, there is a PAM mastery package where it includes both level one and level two, right? Maybe you can just briefly walk us through um, what are the key differences between level one and level two. Outside the perspective, let's say I'm a new student. Do I need to learn both levels as well? Level one is structured in a way, even if you go for level one alone, right? You will be able to start trading. In simple terms, that like level two is more advanced. We cover more strategy and uh, short-term trading as well. For level one, yes, it will get you started in terms of uh, learning the two strategy like bullish and bearish, force strike, UR1, DR1. These are also the core strategy in price action manipulation, but they are more focused on swing trading, right? Swing trading alone. So level two is where the difference that you learn even more strategy to take advantage of different scenarios in the market, like uptrend continuation, downtrend continuation, timing ultimate box and tops and bottoms, how to trade a crisis, and so on, scalping as well, how to scalp stocks, scalp forex futures, and so on. So this, I think, is the two main difference between L1, L2. But naturally, usually students will go for both, la. Because after they go for level one, they felt that I believe that people who benefit a lot from L1, they will eventually go to L2. So I think also one key factor, because you were talking about how you made money on the different asset classes, right? So PEM in general as a strategy, it's applicable to all types of asset classes. Am I right to say that? So in PEM, we are not specific on uh, just an asset class. It's not like a forex course or a stock course, but it is more focused on the strategy, right? Uh, you can use the strat the price action manipulation strategy in stocks, forex, futures, CFD, crypto as well. Because all these asset classes I traded before and they are covered uh, in L1 and L2. But for L1, mainly will be on just stocks. But L2, we'll, we'll dive more into forex, uh, futures. And also there are lessons in how to trade crypto using price action manip manipulation strategy. Right. So since there are so many different lessons, right, on different modules, right, if I were to only ask you to choose one, like what's that one powerful lesson in the course that you would choose? Actually, all lessons are important. Uh. But I would say that the, the one that's the most important uh, is the, the lesson in on how to take advantage of crisis. I read a lot of books before and I also go I, online and search information on how to trade crisis, right? I usually cannot find any good information about that. But until when, when I was conduct, uh, creating the curriculum for PAM, right, I realized that uh, why not I share how uh, the prop desk traders and how I will trade a crisis. So I created this lesson called Market Accumulation and Distribution Rotation Model. Right? It's a very simple step right, on teaching uh, students how to take advantage of crisis when it occurs. And all these years, like even the COVID crisis is the same mental model to trade the crisis. And that's when you make a lot of money in a short period of time. Basically, you can use it for any kind of market crisis and you will occur every, in my view, every two years uh, where there will be usually one uh, crisis. And I always tell my students this as also. 
in a lifetime, uh, actually, you just need to do one crisis properly. You don't need to trade every two years a major crisis. One crisis, even if you miss the crisis, let's say in 2020, most of the money will be made, will be the next crisis as well. Traders need to practice first, right? I always encourage my students to practice whatever they learn. When the, the, the shit hit the fence, right? You dare to click. Because if you have not been clicking before, right? When, when the crisis come, right? And you, if you don't have the mental model on how to trade it, right? When the crisis come, right? You won't dare to click. And even if you dare to click, right? You don't dare to click a big size. So you need to understand the strategy. You know it and then you start to practice. Then when the shit hit the fence, You'll be very confident that hey, the low risk, high return already. Uh, that's where you you take the opportunity. I think that's very very important. Not only just saying that you get one crisis right, but the preparation work and the homework that you need to do beforehand. I think that's even equally important because we have seen many times where even a bear market comes or opportunity comes. Um, we all like to see in retrospect hindsight, ma. You look back, oh yeah, that time was a good time to buy. But did you buy? I think many people have experienced many times of crisis, but still didn't really manage to take advantage of it. But I think one important factor that you keep talking about, which is um, shadowing senior prop traders, I'm talking about mental model. I think it goes down back to one, one word, right? Which is psychology. So like the trading psychology, mental models, and even like the instinct when you know it's a good time to take opportunity. So maybe you want to expand a little bit about it on how, what, what do you particularly teach that is unique here and some of the key mental models that uh, traders like you take advantage of? So in the price section manipulation course, I do teach my students like, uh, of course, in terms of strategy, there will be strategy that are the normal high probability strategy. All the strategy to me are my babies. They are all considered high probability. So I usually, when students ask me which one is the best, I will say all is the best. It's just that they have different contexts. But in class, I do, I will sh- Emphasize like what time frame, what strategy to look out for. That is the like the mother of all long. That when it occurs, it's like a rare Pokemon. It's a rare Pokemon, and when you see the rare co- Pokemon, are you going to just go in small, catch the rare Pokemon, right? Because it's rare. But it doesn't mean that you miss out on other Pokemon, right? Because there will be day to day, you still have to uh, actively trade, right? So I do touch on this uh, when to take advantage of probability trade setups right along the way all right i think the mental models along the way is to i learned a lot from not just in terms of making money but also managing losses and psychology because in trading there will be wins and loss right and what differentiates a good trader and a non-performing trader is that i would say a good trader know how to manage times of crisis or uh, losing streaks and to to keep feeling confident, keep feeling confident. And when the opportunity comes, he's able to take advantage of the, the, the opportunity. And I always say that the only reason why a trader lose money, right, is because in good times, he never make enough to cover for the bad times. Like some, some, some traders, right, because of psychological reasons, they, but when they're losing money, then they don't dare to trade anymore or they reduce their size significantly. Then when the winning tricks come, they will not be able to capture the, the winning streaks. Seasoned trader with the right mental model and psychology will know that this is just a game of probability. There will be wins and loss, right? So even though he encountered like an aeroplane in the turbulence, right, he knew that eventually he need to stay on course, right? And then he'll reach his destination and you continue trading so that even though in, in downtime, it's okay to lose back because sometimes you cannot control the volatility of the market. Sometimes you do have experience some uh, losing streak. But when the good time comes, right, it's the time to make back even more money. So maybe I just wanted to pivot over to potentially some case studies or maybe a trade review on if you can share uh, maybe one of the few recent ones, a profitable one, how you saw the trade set up and how you executed and maybe one not so profitable ones or maybe you lost money and how it affected your psychology and how you managed to trade. Yeah. Okay, I'll start with the profitable one first, which is uh, maybe I cover the most memorable one, right? Which I also cover in the the black market event, which is Coinbase. And Coinbase is, a, is something that I think can relate to a lot of people, right? Because during that time there was a SEC lawsuit on Coinbase and Binance, and then stock price gap down, right? When the stock price gap down, right, a lot of traders actually who bought earlier on 
or investor who bought earlier on, they, they freak out when the price suddenly get down on lawsuit. And it's not, say, it's a bad earnings, it's a lawsuit. So it's like comparing earnings and lawsuit, right? I think lawsuit is uh, hit investor harder, right? Because it's like a big question mark. Then I think a lot, a lot of traders actually sold uh, when the market opened. And even when the market rise, they thought that they can faster get out, they faster get out. So there's a lot, I think, sell liquidity into the market. And I saw that as the market get down for Coinbase below the immediate swing low, right? I, I based on price action manipulation strategy, I, I, I can see that the market maker, the big boys, is accumulating. Accumulating means that they as people are selling or as stop losses are being triggered, they were buying in. And I don't know why they are buying in, actually. If you ask me why are the market makers buying in? But there's one lesson I learned uh, in my career is this. The number one mistake that traders make is to be influenced by news. If the market maker is long, right, you don't need to know why they are long. If they are long means they believe you'll go up. And maybe you will know the, the reason maybe is uh, reviewed later, uh, but you cannot wait until the reason is reviewed later. You wait until the, the, the reason, right, come out, the positive news come out later, the thing will reverse. But if you see the market maker is long, like you, you just have to follow him and believe in his black box that he knows something. And so that's when I bought in as well in uh, for the Coinbase trade, which I shared in the black market event. And I think within one month, the, the, the stock price didn't threaten me because I knew that I'm in the right uh, positioning as the big boy. So they're not going to threaten him, their own position. So it was a very smooth ride. It was just all the way one line. And by the time the the good news come in, right? Coinbase actually tanked. After they, they announced that the, the, new, the, the lawsuit is nothing much, then the, 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 the stock price actually reversed. So that's a very classic example of market manipulation and having the skill to understand. You must understand this because if you do not understand market manipulation, right? When the stock price gets down, right? You will not dare to buy. And if you bought, you will panic. But if you understand what they are doing, right? You will not panic. You may even buy in or you just hold on for it to recover. So I think that's the, the main key lesson here. Okay, unprofitable one. I think recently I entered uh, this stock called DuPont. DuPont, right? Uh, it's considered a fundamentally good stock. So I actually entered it uh, thinking that uh, just to do a normal technical swing trade. It was a valid trade setup, but I actually entered uh, slightly earlier before the confirmation signal uh, occur. So we in, in PEM, we have a rule, you know, the weekly bar, we should enter only after the bar closed. So I remember that was when on a Friday, right, on a Friday night, I thought that the, the weekly bar would have closed as it is. Right, so I actually entered and then I go and sleep. Then the next day, I on Saturday, I realized, hey, actually the bar did not close the way it should close. But it, it, it turns out to be a non- uh, did not close above a certain line uh, based on our price action manipulation strategy. Uh, but I still continue to hold on, thinking that anyway, I've already, I already entered, and I'll just see how the market perform. By right, I should have just so-called closed the trade altogether. But instead, I think I made a mistake there, right? I continue to hold on. But fortunately, I have a stop loss in place, automated stop loss. So it just trigger and just stop me out uh, automatically. But if I did not have an automatic stop loss, right? The stock price actually go uh, actually go all the way down after that. So that's also important, the importance of having a stop loss or automatic stop loss or a mental stop loss in place. So yeah. when you are discussing about looking at trading as a game of probability, right? Actually, what is the expected win rate and returns percentage if you can share? Okay, so in price action manipulation strategy, the win rate range from 40 to 60%. Right, I would say there are times when it's about around 40, then you will range between 50, 60. And if you take on those, the specific time frame, the higher time frame, like weekly chart or even monthly chart, right, the win rate, the win rate can even range from 60, 70, 80%. Right, so it also depending on the, the different time frames. The lower the time frame you go, naturally the win rate will decrease by a little bit, right? Because there'll be a lot more noise. So the higher the, the time frame, the short, the, the trade-off is that uh, the feedback period 
which is the time to take to hit the target of stop loss will be slightly longer. But you compensate by having a much better uh, win rate. In terms of the risk reward? Two styles of uh, taking a profit. The first style is the technical approach. Technical approach means I set a fixed risk reward. Price action manip manipulation community. We have a ma magic number. One is to two. Or one is to 1.7 and also two. La. I mean, usually for short-term trading and speculative swing trade, then we use one is to 1.7 or one is to two. So basically, we just enter and with the one cancel other order, we just leave it there and let the, the price hit the intended risk reward. But for there'll be there'll be times when I enter on positions where I have conviction in, right? Fundamental conviction. And that's when I will not have a specific hard uh risk reward, like example one is to two. I will enter, I will still have my mental stop loss, but I will I will write the thing and see how it moves. And then I look out for a discretionary exit based on uh, signs of top. And signs of top is for example signs of bull trap pattern. Bull trap pattern means that there's a swing high, the price session go above the swing high like a breakout and then comes back down. This is what uh, I, I cover in the black market event. And also signs of top can be like flush up bar. That means a series of big green bars tells you that uh, retailers are FOMOing in. That's when actually the time to let go a position. So for discretionary exit, I could really write the, the position all the way, right? Like for example, 2021, right? I was trading a lot of cryptos. And let's use uh, Bitcoin as an example. I told my students that my fundamental conviction for Bitcoin is 100,000. When Bitcoin goes to around 50, 60,000, right? There was a major signs of top. There was a series of bull trap. And for a lot of cryptos, there was major flush up bars. And that was like across the board for the entire crypto ecosystem, right? But that was suddenly one day I felt that Actually, I'm a believe I'm as a believer, I can tell you it's very difficult to go and sell. But I one night, one day I, at night, I told myself I need to be rational and not be influenced by the fact that I'm just going to wait for him to go a hundred thousand. But when I look at the chart, I ask myself this question: is this the right thing to do now? Based on what I my years of experience. And when I ask myself the right question, I got the right answer. Lah. Yes, I must take some profit here. And that's when I, I started to exit my position based on the uh, the, 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 the signs of top. And it helped me to secure a, a huge chunk of profits before the market crash. A few days later, 50%. Yeah, so that's how I will I trade. I do have a technical exit and also I do exit based on discretion if I have certain conviction on the stock. The same for Palantir now. Like I'm, I'm holding on to Palantir, right? A lot of students know that I'm holding on Palantir. My target price for Palantir is at least $50. I may not exit at $50. Now it's about $20, $20 over dollars. Along the way, if I see signs of top, I may exit based on discretion. The reason why you want to exit on discretion is because you don't want to short change yourself. You know, when you put one to, one to two, right? Then later you short change yourself, the thing keep going higher. Especially for a set where you have conviction. So Elson, I think just wanted to ask on behalf of students or potential students, right? So let's say if now I take level one and level two of PEM, um, do you share your trades with your students? Okay, in the PEM course, I do not specifically share uh, my, my trade setups. The uh, If I see any interesting examples in the market, from time to time, I do share in the PEM discussion chat group, right? And also we have this uh, validation sheet, right? For all students to access. So this validation sheet, uh, any students can actually post a uh, potential trade setups there. And then me and the, the PEM coaches, we do look, we will validate the validation sheet every day, up to 50 trades a day. So that will be about uh, 250 trades, up to 250 trades uh, per week. So that every day there is uh, potential trade setups validated by me and my team of coaches. Uh, in the PEM discussion group, it's also when students can share their trading ideas there. Like if you're not sure about certain trading concepts, right, you can always ask uh, me inside the, the PEM discussion chat group, right? You're not sure whether the trade setup is valid or not. I do uh, help you guys out uh, to, and check with you guys whether it's a valid trade setup or not in the discussion chat group, right? 
specifically for a trade sharing of trade setups, I do that more specifically in the PTP. The PTP is the PEM Trader Playbook, similar to what Adams have have for UIP, uh, OTP. That what op bank have for options. So in PTP, it will be mainly just uh, me sharing the trades that I've done using the model portfolio of uh, $50,000, which I started, right? What kind of trade setups I do day-to-day. Uh, -day. PTP, I will not be covering the, the, the strategy details, right? What's the uh, UR1, DR1, what is the, the, the risk management and so on? Because those who, are, who actually go for the PTP are assumed to be experienced traders or who have went through the PEM course. So usually students, they when they if were to go to PTP, they usually have gone to TEM first, right? To, to learn the strategy. So I think just to confirm and clarify, so if let's say today I'm a prospective student, I join PEM Mastery, L1 and L2, I'll go in, right. I'll soak in all the knowledge and I'll be added into a Discord community where if I have any questions, I'll ask in the group and then um, the coaches and even yourself, you are in the same group and then you will answer any questions. So on top of that, we have uh, some sort of a validation sheet where anybody, yep. anyone in the community has access to it. Uh, we all share uh, different trade setups and trade ideas and it'll be validated by the coaches and yourself every day. So for those that specifically want um, to know what you are particularly doing um, with that $50,000 model portfolio, that's mm -hmm. a separate service under the PEM Trader Playbook. So I think just yep. some last notes, right? For somebody like a viewer online and then they're watching this video and they're asking, hey, Elson, what's the minimum startup capital or what's the minimum um, portfolio size should I have before looking into trading with PEM, price action manipulation? And is there any level of experience and even time commitment needed? Okay, a uh, good starting capital would be about 3.5K to $5,000 uh, USD. Okay, to, to start trading. In terms of like time commitment, right? It depends on the style of trading that you are looking at. If you are doing scalping, you probably need to commit at least about three hours a day uh, looking at the charts and sitting there monitoring the, the price action of the, of the market, right? Even though I teach my students how to trade the 30 minutes chart, you still have to be there, lah, right? To monitor every 30 minutes, how the price action forms, whether that's a, that's a, a setup, right? If you want a more hands-free uh, style, right? Like, uh, I would say like spend lesser time every day to monitor and then still be able to, to grow your capital. I would say, right, swing trading time frame, like you trade on the higher time frame. And once you're proficient in what we do in the price station manipulation course, you, you should take less than 15 minutes a day to monitor and manage your trades. I would say the level of experience you need is at least you need to know how to use the computer and install the trading software, put in your orders lah, when you have the trading software. Uh, it doesn't mean that you must be a banker, analyst, or accountant to do trading. I have students who are from different, they, they different background. They, they can still excel in trading. Like for me personally, I, I started, I studied IT on last time, but I went on to become a, a trader as well. Most important, I think, must have the interest, must have the interest and also the passion for trading. Even the step-by-step -step guide, right, to put in orders and stuff, it's also covered in the course itself, right, on how to use particular platforms. Yeah, so I think those are really a very handhold, even a very beginner-friendly person, and a, uh, the course is structured in a way like that. So the course is structured in a way, right, that eventually I need to get you to this level where you are able to, to find the setups. But in fact, finding the setups, I also, I also have a script for you to screen. So you don't even need to actually find the setup yourself. Right, to find the sales and also to enter the trade, do your risk management. So, but we will cover step by step the basic semi advanced and then we'll go to the advanced stage where you can start trading yourself. I think I just wanted to ask since you have been coaching for some years, for some time already, right? Um, are there any particular stories or impressions that left a very deep impression in you, maybe from your students or from whoever that until today you still remember and one of your driving motivations? Actually, at the start, uh, when I begin coaching, right? I find that it's fun and it's something interesting. And I love to share about trading ideas. Like trading, I like to talk about trading. Like if I meet a friend over dinner or lunch or even meet like-minded traders like Adam, Bang, we, our passion is talking about trading. So it's natural for me, I think that when I when I, when I join uh, Adam is, is that I enjoy the whole journey about 
this concept of teaching people the real skill set of trading. And it has been a uh, great fulfillment for me and also uh, especially it's encouraging right when my students make money from the strategy that I teach, uh, teach them. I have father who came for my webinar, but he enrolled his son. He told me that uh, a bit reti I retired already, but I know that you what you talk about makes sense because I, I trade before. This is uh, something that my, my, my son will benefit. And I remember that you know, this uncle, his son is uh, less than maybe 15, 16 years old. And he asked me whether he can enroll. I said, there's no age limit. Uh. Forward thinking father, like he paid for his son to come, even though his son is not there at the, the, the webinar. So that leave a very deep impression uh, with me. Husband came with his wife, even though wife is not there. And he told his wife that even though I got the course manual, but I'm not going to let you just see the course manual at home. Because I, I, I know that you will benefit a lot when you come over here and listen to Elson directly. So these are some of the some of the interesting stories along the way. And it, it has been a motivating factor for me to continue teaching. So let's say I'm currently on the fence. Um, I'm right. thinking about um, taking up the course of doing PEM level and level two. Do you have an elevator pitch on why PEM, the PEM trading mastery course is a good buy today? I will, I will say that start early, you give yourself a uh, more screen time, right? Then you will experience the ups and downs of market earlier on, right? It's always best to, to start early. And I can tell you, I, if it's me, uh, not to boost my own course, but if it's me, when I start, when if I'm a teenager last time, if I see a PEM course, I will definitely go for it. I designed the course in a way that I, I know someone like me, when, when he's young, will definitely go for it. And I have a lot of experienced traders as well who always who come to PEM, they will always tell me that PEM is the missing buzzer that they have been looking for all these years. So that when, let's say, crisis occur or when opportunity comes, you have practice and you understand the strategy, you have the confidence to take advantage of the opportunities. All right, guys. So right now, right in the black market event is a once a year mega event. Okay, it's a very good time to actually enroll into the Priyana Profit courses. So it's going for about 75% off for the price action manipulation mastery package. It's a very good deal, guys. I guarantee you it's the lowest price that you can enroll in a year. And if, may, if you want to go for both, there is a ultimate uh, PEM package that you can explore as well. For level one, level two, and if you're interested in the PTP course, it's also going for about 67% discount, right? And enroll and I'll see you guys in the discussion chat group. Thanks, Elson, for all the sharing, the different insights that you have shared, shedding some light in terms of the trading industry, what senior traders think, the mental models and whatnot. So once again, thank you for coming on and we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Thanks, Elson. Thank you.